I am a one of the minimally invasive gynecologic surgeon in Long Island uh, campus. So minimally invasive surgery uh, replaced the use of the large incision on the abdomen with a smaller incision where the surgeon allow uh, to see the inside of abdomen with a small camera and manipulate the internal organ with a uh, small surgical tools. So uh, two main types of minimally invasive gynecologic surgery. First, on your left, the lapros lap laparoscopic surgery, and then hysteroscopic surgery. So as I mentioned in previous slide, laparoscopic surgery involved a small incision, sometimes no incision, uh, one, like a one to four incision along the abdomen, and then surgeon implant the CO2 gas, and then uh, bring the troca, and then with the troca, the surgeon uh, putting the camera and light and this with the instrument and then perform the surgery. Um, hysteroscopic surgery, uh, sometimes they don't involve any incision in the abdomen and they put the, uh, we put the camera and then light through the, the vagina and the cervix and then uh, to see the inside of uterus to visualize the internal cavity. So as I mentioned the previous slide, laparoscopic surgery, surgeon standing at the bedside and then holding the camera and then uh, instrument and then watching the, the screen which is connected to the camera to perform the surgery. And then also on the right side slide actually is my um, picture and then assistant usually has to stay at the bedside to assist the surgery. So is the, the laparoscopic surgery, the surgeon is heavily rely on assistant to perform the surgery. Robotic surgery is considered as the one of the evolution in minimally invasive surgery. Uh, has a three part, as you look at the, the, the robotic uh, platform, has a three part. The first one is the robotic console where the surgeon is performing the surgery. And then the actual the OR table, patient is laying on the OR table. And then the robotic arm is attached on the robotic troca. And then the tower has a screen which is connected to the robotic camera. The, the rest of the OR staff can see the screen so that the, you know, they can follow while the surgeon is doing the surgery. So uh, since April 2005, intuitive surgical Da Vinci surgical system has been approved by the FDA uh, for the robotic surgery in gynecologic field. And then they, they, they have been a uh, dramatical evolution of the technology and surgical techniques and then approach. So why is different? So f uh, as previous previously mentioned by the other speakers, Da Vinci surgery is the advanced type of laparoscopic surgery, has a two separate camera. It consolidates and then provides 3D visualization of the operative field. And also robotic arm holds the laparoscope, which is completely controlled by the surgeon, uh, and then con control the surgical view by the surgeon. So it's, it's less, uh, dependent on the surgical uh, assistant and then is fully controlled by the surgeon. And lastly, surgical instruments are controlled completely by the surgeon at the distal tip and then has the full range of motion in the surgeon's wrist. So this end of wrist allows the surgeon to perform the surgery with the exact same ease and precision uh, as if the surgeon's, surgeon's hands inside of the abdomen. So these are the advantages of the laparoscopic surgery. The better visualization, better instrument, in, instrumentation allowing more precise surgical dissection, and then better surgical dexterity, simplifying complex surgical procedure, easier and fast suturing, and then surgeon's control of the robotic arm allows the less dependence on the surgical assistant, and then allow the more difficult case laparoscopically, and then better ergonomics. So uh, switching gears, I want to talk about um, three main benign gynecologic condition in uh, which I'm using the robot. The first, uterine fibroid. Uterine fibroid is very benign, uh, benign growth from the uterine muscle, usually common during uh, reproductive age. And then, um, 
And fibroid is more often than colored women, like African American and Asian woman than white woman, and also involved in the genetic factor. Uh, it's, not, it's still not clear for the etiology of the fibroid, and uh, some research shows that uh, they develop from the misplaced, jet, misplaced cell even before the birth, and sometimes it also uh, involved by the hormone, such as estrogen and progesterone, and then hormonal medication is also the fibroid to grow. Most of the fibro is a benign condition and uh, without any symptom, it doesn't require any treatment. However, if the uh, patient has a heavy bleeding, uh, which require any medical treatment or blood transfusion, sometimes IV iron infusion, or uh, bleeding between the period, or uh, if, the, if the mass is uncertain of the origin, such as from the ovary or from uterus, or uh, the rapid growing of the fibroid, and it infertility or pelvic pain, with this condition, we do need uh, medical attention to this uh, fibroid. The treatment of fibroid uh, medication, surgery, or some other procedures such as uterine artery embolization and then fibroid ablation with the radio frequency. Uh, open times, when you see the uh, right-hand side picture, this is actually my, one of my patients. Uh, you can imagine how big is the fibroid compared to my hands. Um, sometimes this fibroid occupying entire pelvis and uterus, and then it bothers the, uh, the, the digestive system and urinary problem. So uh, the, this kind of case fibroid has to be removed. Uh, the normal size of uterus is usually 70 gram. This fibroid was almost se five kilogram. Next common condition is ovarian cyst. Uh, ovarian cyst is a sac or pouch filled with fluid or, s or other tissue uh, from form in or on the ovary. And they usually occur during reproductive age, sometimes after menopause. And most of the ovarian uh, cyst are benign um, and usually comes and goes. And usually the, the cyst doesn't have a symptom sometimes dull and sharp pain. If the cyst becomes very large, it can twist and then cause sharp acute onset of sharp pain. And sometimes the cyst bleed inside and then bust, in which case also cause uh, acute pain. Um, most of the cyst doesn't require any treatment. Usually uh, we can watch and monitor the cyst. But if the cyst becomes very large, and then causing symptoms such as like a sharp pain, uh, we do need surgical attention. Um, it types of cyst, this depends on several factors such as how large is the cyst, and then patient age, and then desire to have children, and whether the patient has history of breast, ca breast cancer and ovarian cancer. The form of the, ci the ovarian cyst surgery involves like uh, only cystectomy or taking out entire ovary depends on the patient factor as well. The lastly, I want to mention about endometriosis. It's uh, uh, one of the very uh, common condition in young age group. The endometriosis is the condition where the endometrial lining uh, occur uh, outside of uterus. Usually one in uh, 10 women in the young age has uh, endometriosis. And then uh, the most common area of endometriosis are uh, peritoneum, ovary, fallopian tubes, outer surface of the uterus, bladder, ureter, intestine, and cecum, and posterior cul de sac. So basically, uh, all the pelvic organ, sometimes upper abdomen, uh, has the endometriosis. Um, and then symptom, uh, most of the women has no symptom. Sometimes they found to have endometriosis in the later age when they have trouble to have a baby. Uh, but who has endometriosis? The, the person who has endometriosis mainly uh, when they have a problem, usually pain. So chronic pelvic pain, pain, pain during period, and pain during sexual intercourse, pain during bowel movement, uh, and during urination, sometimes heavy bleeding. The treatment de depends on the extent of the disease and your symptom, and then whether you want to have a baby or not. And then uh, usually endometriosis can be treated with a medical, medical treatment or surgery or both. 
So uh, what types of gynecology procedure can be done with the Da Vinci robot? So, so first, hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is basically remove the uterus. And then uh, myomectomy is uh, taking out the fibroid. And then uh, ovarian cystectomy means taking out the ovarian cyst. And then endometriosis ex ex excision. So, and we do perform the prolapse surgery as well, and infertility surgery, and pelvic pain surgery. So this is actual uh, my patient video. So as I mentioned earlier, the one of the benefit of the robotic surgery is fine dissection because it's 10 times magnification. So especially young woman, like uh, this patient is 15 year old, have seven centimeter ovarian cyst. The key of this surgery is to remove the cyst completely and then save the ovarian tissue as much as I can. So, um, Um, so it's a little bit long. I can I cannot. So uh, I cannot moving fast. So anyway, so um, so this surgery uh, involved the uh, remove the entire cyst completely, and then once the cyst is removed, I use the surgical bag, the specimen placed into the bag and then the, the specimen removed completely without any spilling of the specimen. Uh, the second video, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the benefit of the robot has end wrist. It has a full range of motion, so I can rotate the, the tip of the instrument 3600 degree. So it's usually when this is the, after taking out the fibroid, there is a big gap. So I have to put so many sutures uh, using the robotic platform. I can easily put in the suture uh, very easily and then faster. So I use the, um, uh, when I do the myomectomy, uh, robot has a lot of benefit. Um, the next slide actually. So one of the most question I get from my patient is that how I remove this big mass through the small incision. Um, so this is technique I adapt when I do uh, large incision surgery, uh, large specimen surgery. So this is the, in the very beginning how I set up the troca. And then um, even before starting the case, I made a two centimeter incision below the bikini and then uh, for preparing for tissue modulation using the uh, uh, Alexit retr retractor. And then the second video shows actual hysterectomy. This is also large uterus with a fibroid. So uh, the, the once, so I'm, I'm doing the surgery with a three arm. Uh, it's not going well. Uh, so, so at the end of the procedure, once the specimen is removed again, I use the surgical bag uh, and then this specimen is placed into the bag and then string is pulled through the the hole where I create in the very beginning of the surgery so that I, I am already s made a setup for tissue extraction. So last slide, uh, last video actually shows how I modulate, hand modulate with the specimen in a contained fashion. So you see my hands and using the blade, uh, remove the tissue uh, with a cutting. Uh, with this fashion, I don't need to spill any specimen and then uh, the remove the tissue safely from the abdomen. So lastly, uh, what question should I ask my doctor about robotic surgery? Number one, keep in mind that conventional laparotomy, laparoscopy, and da Vinci robotic surgery all fall within the standard of care, and each have their own advantage and disadvantage. Second, your physician should, should answer, should be able to answer all the details of to, uh, about the surgery with the risk benefit alternatives. And every surgery and every patient is different. And you should discuss each of these surgical options with your patient. Thank you.